esteemed viewers in this tutorial we will discuss we will make a continued discussion on functions in c and my respected viewers might recall that in tutorial number 1 on the related topic we discussed we discussed the very simple kind of functions the functions which will not receive anything from the calling function and which will not send anything to the calling function but in this tutorial we will just uh, dwell on another two kind of functions kinds of functions one is non receiving and returning kind of function and uh, receiving but non returning kind of functions and first of all we will we will go through non receiving and returning functions these functions as the name itself would imply uh, they are non void functions non void functions because they are going to return something uh, any one calculated value okay and uh, and they do not receive anything from the calling function uh, some functions return a value but don't have any parameters that is data received from the calling function uh, it, they will look like this they will look like this at the at the prototypic stage and we are we are be, we have been told that a function will enjoy three pride of places one at the prototypic level where the functions are declared where the compiler will be made to known as to kind of functions that are in offing and uh, the definition stage where the functions will be defined the code for the functions will be uh, will be written and the other other uh, place in the program is the calling stage uh, when the functions are called they won't be uh, they we won't mention the what kind of value it is going to return we will simply mention just like a, an expression okay it is something like say, telling f of x okay calling within the function anyway functions will enjoy three stages or three pride of places or three stages in the program one prototypic stage the other calling stage and the other one is the execution stage where function will be executed so three states a function has to enjoy during the programming when the when the program is in process and this is another type and this particular function returns a character a value and this returns a float kind of a value okay but anyway we will not deal with uh, those examples of functions which will return character character type values because it deals with pointers uh, we need to understand uh, pointer concept okay when we when we visit pointers tutorial then we will uh, we will give a recall memory to use of our development of functions that can return character type of values and this is name of the function and these are all kinds of value it returns okay and uh, the kind of value it returns the name of the functions and this opening bracket and flowering brackets and parameters if at all any is called as signature of a function okay this program comes as an example for the second category of functions that we are discussing and it just returns collects information from an employee about his salary uh, and the duration of service he or she has made and the function functions are defined before main so that they become global functions and uh, definition uh, prototypic definition or declaration of these functions is not at all required because they have been defined before main okay it returns float kind of a value the name of the function is also befitting that it 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 gets the salary of an employee so float salary this is a local variable this is local to function that's what we were telling that functions will have for some kind of a security for the data and here this salary cannot be accessed by any other function other than get salary function uh, put as what is your salary as of now this is asking the user and the salary is red it is of a float kind of variable return salary return is a keyword okay it will it will enable the salary value uh, salary value to be returned to the calling function so the calling function will receive upon the execution of this get salary function the salary value that has been given by the user and it is uh, once again this is also returning a number of years of service that is the so is the name float service years this is the local variable and how many years of service this is user being questioned 
and he will enter the number of service years and it will promptly return the service years to the calling function and calling function is here uh, invariably it is a main function float tenure pay the salary will become pay over here and number of years of service will become tenure and they become local variables as far as main function is concerned or calling function is concerned this is a local function once again which, which is not a participant in any of the functions but anyway this is for a for a matter of uh, totality of this particular program this name is included so that the name of the person will also be displayed pay equal to get salary so get salary um, upon execution okay uh, so the control flow will be like this main anyway control has to start from start flowing from the main uh, it will it will just pass the control over here goes okay control will go to get salary and it get salary will get executed and once again as soon as the control looks at this closing brace it will once again jump to this particular situ particular stage okay uh, in the main it will come over here it will the value brought out by get salary will be poured into a local variable called as pay Okay. tenure is number of years number of years service this is gathered by number of years of service of the employee is gathered by this particular function and once the function returns it will be over here okay it will be poured a copy of number of years of service will be made into tenure and that that was brought to this main function by number of years of service it's a return value return value of this particular function your good name okay and the name will be entered and get as put as functions are used uh, the my, you know, my respected viewer should notice whenever whenever a statement doesn't contain any control characters like uh, uh, format specifiers or tab keys etc etc it's better we make use of this put as and get as it will it will become very handy and anyway the the statement that is mentioned over here happens to be just a literal string so it will get the name into the memory so the name entered by the user will be will be going to a location called as name which is a string variable which has been declared over here print of details of percentages name so the name will come at the top okay of the details of jayaram whatever whatever the name that is given by the user okay years of service tenure tenure is actually collected by uh, gets uh, this number of years of service your salary is pay pay is once again gotten by the main function by get salary function so these functions will never receive anything from the main apart from the control but they do return something of course this kind of functions are of limited use because because uh, they do not carry any information from the calling function okay at their they are stand alone functions they will calculate something or they will procure something and they will send back to the caller okay number no prototypes as functions are made global this program example 2 has a function that returns the value of pi value of pi which is worked out by using series for a given given level of accuracy of course uh, our uh, respected viewers may recall that uh, pi series pi series can be approx so the value of pi can be approximated by pi series and pi is given by pi is given by square root of square root of uh, 6 by uh, 1 square plus 6 by 2 square 6 by 3 square etc etc and of course uh, the simple trick is more number of terms we consider more accurate the value of pi is but anyway sky is not the limit therefore we will prescribe some kind of an accuracy so the accuracy is calculated of course uh, this has been explained very well explained when we discussed in the tutorial Uh, uh, men, uh, with a with a title iterative constructs okay uh, our our respected viewers can once again go back to that and let uh, and let them understand the the logic behind logic behind uh, pi series okay how to calculate and how to fix up a accuracy level and how to obtain uh, the exact value to a to a stated accuracy level okay and here uh, prototypes are defined prototypes are declared float find pi it is not receiving any value from the main function okay but it is returning the value that it is returning is value of pi okay so this kind of functions can be made very well use 
it can be pressed into service whenever certain uh, certain parametric values are to be computed uh, in a in a pure way in a indirect way something like this okay pi find pi okay find pi is the name of the function so name of the function is uh, same of the function uh, connotes what exactly it is doing it is finding the value of pi and it is returning uh, to this particular variable and this happens to be a local variable in the in the calling function print of the value of pi equal to percentage of so in order to get uh, symbols ascii sorry yeah the characters uh, non programming characters okay or uh, typographic characters something like this in order so this will show some kind of a brevity in our program and as well as it will be very clear the value of pi uh, pi is not available on the keyboard okay therefore in order to generate this particular symbol we have to hold alt key and then we have to simultaneously press 2 2 7 and we have to lift both the fingers the finger that pressed 7 the finger that held alt key pressed okay then pi is generated okay this is only to we could have written pi pi but anyway that doesn't augur well therefore we have we have just placed the symbol of pi itself okay so float find pi this is the definition of the uh, definition of the function so in the definition of the function we will find local variables local variables that are required so here local variables are accuracy level that is defined by the user sum equal to 0 present previous present value of the pi series previous value of the pi series and present minus previous value will give the difference and we will just go on computing the value of pi till difference is lesser than or equal to given accuracy okay term this is used uh, to generate terms that is 6 by 1 square 6 by 2 square etc etc so long int i we have to make you we have to declare this i to be long int because it is 6 over i square 6 over 1 square 6 over 2 square we don't know uh, how long how long this computation is to be carried over the series in order to obtain the requested accuracy therefore it should be declared as long int okay uh, so the variable gets multiplied and it will be stored in a temporary uh, location okay and if it exceeds i into i exceeds an ordinary integer value that is a, that is a short integer value consuming only 2 bytes of course the overflow will happen will happen and we won't get the desired level of accuracy okay put us enter the accuracy level the user will enter the accuracy level something like point not 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 1 okay i equal to 0 we have not yet calculated the value of pi therefore previous equal to 0 of course this uh, this particular program has been discussed threadbare in one of our tutorials okay uh, therefore anyway it's a for the sake of completeness i am just explaining once again term equal to 6 over i square okay sum equal to sum plus term so sum is set to 0 sum is set to 0 so sum equal to 0 plus 1 6 over 1 square now present equal to square root of sum so present will be definitely bigger than the previous therefore we will get difference equal to present minus previous then we will increment i i will become 2 now okay next in next thing it will become 6 over 2 square sum plus equal to sum plus equal to 6 over 1 square plus 6 over 2 square sum plus equal to so this is a composite operator sum equal to sum plus term okay so difference equal to present minus previous i plus plus then before we leave this loop we will set previous to equal to present we have gotten difference and therefore this loop will be iteratively working till as long as difference is greater than or equal to accuracy when it becomes less than accuracy it will stop so return present the present value will contain the accurate value of pi so that will be return you can place uh, return return is a keyword anyway it, it was told in the previous example the this is the value that is being sent therefore it can be kept in bracket or brackets can also be removed okay so enter accuracy level we have actually executed this particular program uh, you can see the accuracy level it is point not 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 one so this can be succinctly written as 1 into 10 to the power of 10 to the power of minus 7 okay you can do that also 
uh, uh, 1 1.0 e minus 7 that is a way to give the accuracy level in, with scientific notation okay value of pi equal to 3.141135 okay this be this is being obtained by the function which simply returns this particular value without receiving any data or any information okay uh, any raw material from the calling function now this is the second uh, third kind of functions void functions with parameters these kind of functions do not return anything to the calling function but they do receive but they do receive some kind of value or values or parameters so called parameters from the called function of course this kind of functions uh, with has parameters but still returns void uh, telling returns void is also as good as telling it returns nothing this function should be coded as a standalone function and they cannot be part of an expression in the calling function for example uh, you cannot you cannot print this function print the value of this particular function because it is not returning anything it is not returning they, uh, it will be declared as void only okay they will do whatever the task that is being assigned and they will vane away they will vane away such functions have limited use as they do not return any value to the calling function we will take a, take up example 4 in the series and here uh, this particular program uh, will uh, has a power function which will simulate a power function it receives two values and uh, this is the base and this is the index and for such kind of functions prototype will look like this the, it is returning y the name of the function is power it receives two integer values this is all and it is it is needless to mention integer base comma integer index and that also holds good but anyway it becomes redundant okay so void power what kind so the kind of value that is being returned okay the parameters list okay is called as the signature of a function okay uh, uh, printf enter the base and the index of both integers both integers raise to power that is the name of the function of course we have to change this over here array and it is yeah r a i s e rise to power yeah now it's correct sorry oh the name of the function okay now these are all the things that we have to remember okay uh, while uh, dictating the prototype while writing the prototype while declaring the prototype see every element of the prototype should match with the function definition raise to power this is the name of the function and integer comes first another integer comes first next okay the parameters their succession their type should should match when we when we define the function over here y raise to power raise to power integer a integer b i will let us come to this so enter the base and index of both the integers so base and index uh, you remember base and index happens to be local variables for this calling function the calling function here is the main function itself and and this is the prototype and these two are actual parameters or arguments it, it, they look like f of x comma y in mathematical terms they are called as arguments in programming parlance they are called as actual parameters okay when the definition of the function is made this is called as function header so at the definition of a function we will notice function header function header should always match with match with the function prototype of course semicolon is missing semicolon should not be placed and here base takes the name as a and index takes the name as b therefore a will get a copy of the base and b will get the copy of the index and we are trying to calculate a to the power of b and a is different and b is different now whatever the changes that you are going to make for a and b will never be reflected over here that's what we told functions will offer some kind of a security for the data okay so integer a they are called as formal parameters they are also called as aliases a is an alias for base b is an alias for index okay alias means some kind of a nickname they are also called as some authors do call them as dummy parameters so when the function is called 
they do not contain the kind of the variables simply variable names are mentioned and when the function is called uh, we won't mention what kind of value it is returning so this is the this is the difference between prototypic definition of a, sorry prototypic declaration of a function the calling stage of a function and the and the execution stage, that is the, the function definition stage so we have set forth power equal to 1 and i to run the loop i equal to 1 and it has to run b number of times if uh, 2 is a and b is 3 2 into 2 into 2 this multiplication has to be done three times that is the logic so e equal to i equal to 0 i less than or equal to b i plus plus power equal to power into a 1 into a a into a a into a into a, a cube if if b equal to 3 so now we have been uh, we have been succinctly printed over here percentage d to the power of percentage d equal to percentage d a will go over here the value of a will go over here b will go over here the value of power will come over here okay and it is printed over here only there are local variables and you can see power is not returned so this function will will just showcase the value of the power along with the base value along with the index value and simply vein away and when it looks at this particular closing flower brace that is the delimiter the control will be somewhere over here somewhere over here because this particular statement uh, has uh, has driven the control over here and when the when the function finishes its uh, work uh, computation it will look at this and the control will be over here nothing is there beneath this particular uh, statement therefore it will see the flower brace the closing parenthesis and the the function will hand over the main function will hand over the control to the operating system so functions calls can be made in a different way in several ways compute 7 comma 8 you are just passing the values directly okay it could be compute x comma 8 one is the variable other one is the constant it could be compute 7 comma y okay this is the variable name and it could be compute x plus 6 comma 8 a small expression can also be compute can also be written when we call the function of course not during the prototypic situation not during the function definition this is the various ways in which we can call a function compute compute x comma y comma 8 look at this it's going to Barma's rule and this will be executed whatever the value we are going to get uh, when x is raised to the power of y and that will become base and this will become index so this is function in a function nested function this is also possible during calling stage not again in the prototypic stage not again in the definition stage compute equal to compute x plus y and we have a small expression over here and it could be something like the, this also compute an expression over here another expression over here of course of course needless to say this expression should not be lengthy if they become lengthy uh, things will become complex and uh, it becomes pretty difficult for us to understand so example 5 we will make use of this kind of functions now this function will receive an integer value from the main function it won't return anything it will check for the primality or prime property of a given number okay so this program checks if the integer number sent by the calling function is a prime or not so enter the number so the local variable for the calling function that is main is number and the number is read through the keyboard the user is going to enter this number and check prime okay the function is called over here and number is passed and this number is called as argument and now uh, the function is defined over here and this is the header of the function it returns nothing void check prime integer num you can see the change in the name here it was number now it is num and if you make any changes for this num it won't be reflected in the main function or the calling function in tie to run the loop flag equal to 1 in order to check uh, as a okay so we told in, uh, in our previous tutorial this kind of flags are to be used whenever a program checks okay uh, different times or different numbers 
or different entities several times. Okay. So we go with a, a positive mentality that we will whatever the number that comes to this particular checking function happens to be prime. Okay, that is the meaning of flag equal to one. So we we know the logic. Any number uh, to be tested for its prime property is to be divided starting from two up to half of its value. Okay, if it anywhere gets divided, okay, if the modulo division returns zero. then it is divisible by any other number other than 1 and its by itself therefore it no longer remains to be prime and flag is set to zero okay if it happens in the very first cycle itself there is no question of continuing this for loop therefore flag whenever flag becomes equal to zero we will break the control and the control will be over here so whenever whenever the program whenever the compiler notices the break it will place the control control uh, in a block which is uh, uh, outside outside the block where this break appears so break appears in this block uh, as soon as the break is um, seen by the control it will be just control will be thrown over here only to check this if flag if flag means if flag not equal to 0 so flag is 1 if flag remains to be 1 then percentage d is prime and whatever the number that is there will be printed else percentage d is not prime okay okay this is done by the function it is not returning anything it will publish this whether the number number is prime or not prime and it will wane away another way to check this is uh, modulo division till till i lesser than or equal to square root of num this is another logic but anyway we have used this example 6 now this particular uh, program uh, will uh, will has a function which implements bubble sort it simply receives an array an array to be sorted from the main function and the number of elements okay the necessary green ingredients that are to be supplied to this bubble sort function which is not returning anything are or the array itself which is to be sorted and number of elements because a function cannot count the number of elements just like that therefore we need to provide this kind of information also so prototypic declaration has the kind of value it is returning the name of the function integer it's an array and it is a, a a lone variable number of elements and this all together is called as signature of the function okay clear screen print of how many elements so number of elements n e stands for number of elements enter the elements so elements are taken through a for loop and it is it is being placed in a in an array named arr now we will call this particular function the name of the function is bubble sort and it is it is to be sent with or it is to be provided with array array and number of elements okay arguments they are called as arguments so our the definition between difference between arguments and parameters is arguments will never mention in arguments we will never mention the kind of the variable we will just mention the name just like a mathematical function it is f of x comma y where f is the name of the function and x comma y are the arguments of the function here bubble sort is the name of the function and err and ne are the arguments this program has a function that sorts the array given by the calling function using bubble sorting and here we learnt as to how we can pass an array itself okay bubble sort function which is a function aloof and you can notice the change in the name of the array here it is designated as capital a and there it is err okay a copy of this array is made into a and here uh, it need not in no, no number uh, the the capacity of the array the number of elements the array need not be mentioned over here and if at all we want to mention it should be whatever that you have mentioned over here this should there should not be any mismatch so otherwise the function will show an error so therefore it's pretty easy to leave it as it is integer a open the square bracket close the square bracket integer any and this name is also has been changed there it was any small n uh, sorry lower case n and lower case e and here upper case n and upper case e in order to have a, some kind of a, a fluidity with this kind of programming okay and we got to know that parameters are different 
formal parameters are different, dummy parameters are different, aliases are different. There is no wrong in keeping the same name either. Okay, we can keep the same name, but anyway, we are showing some kind of a bravery in in uh, making these functions to work. Integer i j temp, and you know uh, the bubble sort algorithm will will have n e minus one number of iterations and n e minus one minus i number of passes, number of comparisons in every iteration, and we know this anyway. Anyway, once again, it is not elaborated. And my my viewers, respected viewers, are suggested to go through uh, tutorials and arrays wherein this has been elaborated. If a i a j the previous element is greater than the next element, then then they are to be swapped. And we have a local variable called temp. Temp will receive a f j, and a f j will be freed, and a f j will be filled with a f j plus one. A f j plus one will be freed to be overwritten. A f j plus one equal to temp. Swapping will take place. So once these two for loops are completed, what we get is a sorted array, and the sorted array will be simply printed faithfully by this particular function because it is not returning anything to the calling function. Formal parameters, dummy parameters, aliases, output. We have how many elements? Ten. This is done by the main function. Enter the elements. So it is main function which collected the array. Array numbers are elements: twelve, minus five, seven, eighty-eight, ninety-two, one, not three, fifteen, fifty-six, sixty-three, and minus ten. So minus ten has come in the first instance, and minus five, and the things have been sorted. Okay, this sorting exercise was done by the the function. Okay, so I think with this we complete. With this we complete the entire session on two kinds of functions: non-receiving. But returning, receiving, but not returning. Okay. So by the, with the with the completion of this tutorial, we have discussed three kinds of functions. Okay. As we elucidated in the first tutorial, and the next kind of functions that we are going to uh, that we are going to discuss will take us uh, to a lengthy sessions because more number of uh, programs can be done with that kind of functions, and the functions will receive something. From the calling function, they will also send a value, or a structure, or a pointer to the calling function. If it sends a pointer, it will be sending a huge number of values. If it is sending a structure back, it will be sending a limited number of variables. But anyway, more than one, more than one. If it is a stand-alone a function, it will be able to return formally or by default only one value. Okay, we will discuss that kind of functions. Until then, bye. And if you are liked my uh, liked this tutorial, I request the viewers who are not yet subscribed to kindly subscribe to my channel.